There we are. Good morning. Good to see you all. Hi, Don Jones. And Judy Martin, good morning. I did get your message, Judy. I'll give you a call. Nora Bentley, good morning. Sandy Sauerbeck. And Barry and Margot, good morning. Amy Bowerman, good to see you today. Robin Allen and Joan Riggs. Good morning. I hope you had a good anniversary, Joan. Coming to you, this is a Wednesday, November 18th. Starting to push up against Thanksgiving. Doug Goddard, good morning. It will probably be a, a little uh, different Thanksgiving for many of us with the uh, pandemic. I know that um, we have, uh, with our boys being scattered all around, um, we are only, we, we've only really only had one at the most, I think, in the last, oh, probably three or four years. Different ones at different times, but uh, we had Josh was over in Botswana for a couple of them. Of course, we didn't see him. Chris was, uh, Chris was at, uh, um, up in uh, central Michigan, so we used to get him back a little bit. Judy Southern, hello. Scott Johnson, hello. Mary Ayers, my Aunt Mary, welcome. So anyway, we, it looks like that uh, for this Thanksgiving, uh, we've got Tom down in Houston. He's going to stay there. Chris is in Washington trying to earn his way uh, through a startup a starting position, and so he doesn't have a lot of time. So he is staying down there in Washington, D.C., Josh, we're hoping, uh, will clear his isolation from his COVID and be able to break away for at least a day or two. So that will probably be the extent of Meg and my uh, Thanksgiving. And that's okay. We don't want to, we don't want to expand it out with all of the problems that are going on. Linda Wolf, good morning. We have 18 down a little bit. It's uh, Wednesday. So maybe that's uh it's the old hump day, right? So lots of people doing, uh, have things going on. They'll catch up with us later. Remember, tonight is um, Bible study, and we're going to do our last uh, portion of the Christian response to racism. Um, there was a PDF that was sent out, so you can follow along with that. Uh, it'll be that third lesson. Uh, and this one is we're looking at um, white privilege. Now, that's a loaded term, I know, nowadays, but we're actually going to take a look at it and say, you know, what is it? Honestly, take a look at it. And we know that uh, we're not going to come to a common, um, we're not going to come to a common understanding of that. That's not the purpose of our study. Our study is just to uh, look and discuss and uh, perhaps see things with other eyes and uh, see what we can do. Kevin Vaughn, good morning. I'm sure Chris is with you, too. And Gene Hardwig, good friend from Concord, Michigan, is with us. Good to see you. I think, did I get Larry and Carolyn Thomas? I hope I did. All right. So uh, we have, well, we're up to 25. So it's just a little bit slower coming in today. That's all right. So, and it is just a little bit after nine. But um, so the good news that I have for you is that I don't need to go into any. Oh, oh so tonight at 7 p.m., it's a Zoom call. So uh, message the church or carry van if you don't have that information and you want to participate in it. Again, we'll record that and uh, for later viewing, uh, and that will show up on our on our uh, YouTube channel. So that is where we are today, and I hope uh, I hope to see some of you. Uh, hope to see some of you tonight, as many as you can to make it. Okay. So the, good, uh, the other good news is, is that we, we're working through uh, Habakkuk, uh, one of the minor prophets, and um, the, um, uh, we were in the third chapter, which is, there's only three chapters in the book, and since we kind of intersected with that third chapter and didn't get to one and two, I thought we might have to go back a little bit today. But now I see that there, that was the ending of the Habakkuk, Habakkuk reading for the lectionary. 
So we're into another minor prophet, and uh, which is good. It's Malachi. And, uh, Malach, Malach is the Hebrew word for king. So uh, Malachi stands uh, for king or servant of the king. So we'll see what what uh, God has for us there. But we're always going to start off with the psalm, and today's psalm is Psalm 65. I encourage you, as I always do, to take take a sip of your morning beverage now. And even though we got busy days and lots of things that we want to get done, those will happen. But right now, let's just concentrate and uh, open our hearts and minds uh, to what God might have for us today. So our morning psalm is 65. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. Excuse me. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us with deliverance. O God of our salvation, you are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength, you established the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. Your water is it furrows abundantly, setting its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of your wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy, the, sh the meadows clothe themselves with flocks, the valley decks themselves with grains. They shout and sing together for joy. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Uh, Meg and I, uh, last night, um, I'm, uh, if you didn't know this, um, I'm, 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 I, I like to consider myself to be a sailor. So I'm very interested in especially the Great Lakes. And I had a very good friend who until this year had been a captain on the Great Lakes. He just retired. And Meg and I were uh, fortunate enough that he invited us on uh, one of the big freighters that uh, he served on. And uh, this was a couple years ago. And we were actually able to uh, spend a week uh, traversing. Uh, we started off in, the mid at, uh, in Muskegon. Michigan, and then we went all the way up around the tip of uh, of the lower peninsula and took on a load of uh, limestone, and then took that up through the St. Mary's River and then through the Sioux Locks and then over into Marquette where that was dropped, and then we picked up a load of taconite iron ore and uh, then brought that all the way down the length of Superior through the locks again, and then um, down Huron. Uh, then past Detroit into Erie, uh, and all the way to Toledo, where we where we got off. So we were on almost a week, and uh, what a what a wonderful wonderful experience that was. But while we were there, um, we hit some pretty rough weather at one point. And, uh, it was blowing about 40 miles an hour, and um, I have some video of the waves crashing over the boat. But the reason why I tell you this is last night. There is, um, there is a, a gentleman by the name of Rick Mixter, and he, I don't think he still works for the Detroit Public TV, but he did it. He did for quite a while. He's a videographer, and he really specializes in, in a diver, and he specializes in uh, Great Lakes shipwrecks. So Grand Haven um, Public Library had a, uh, a Zoom call with him where he did one of his presentations about the Great Armistice Day storm. So November 11th of uh, 1940, and there was uh, five or six major ships that were lost. And um, he did a, Rick did a wonderful job, um, you know, uh, doing it. He actually, they actually had video, a uh, movie 
uh, pictures that they had found of the Norma dock, which uh, went um, went aground up by Pentmortar, Michigan, and the the uh, saving of all but two of the 17 men that were, and there was 19 men on it, 17 were saved, and it was really hairy, and um, the um, the winds reached 126 miles per hour on that on that uh, in that storm. And Rick told us, you know, if, if you, we just had winds of almost 60, so consider twice that and how, and I couldn't imagine that. I just couldn't imagine that. So when we read this, um, um, as when we read this and, and talk about the power of God that we can witness in nature, I just, I thought about that too. So we'll move on to our minor prophet reading. This is Malachi, Malachi. And we're in the first chapter, so uh, we'll catch it from the very beginning. And then we'll follow along with this for the next couple of days. So let's listen for the word of the Lord today. An oracle. Right? We talked about those. All of when a prophet um, delivers the word of God, that has to do with uh, a portent of the future. We call it an oracle. So an oracle, the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. A son honors his father and servants their master. If then I am a father, where is the honor due me? And if I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests who despise my name. You say, how have we despised your name? By offering polluted food on my altar. And you say, how have we polluted it? By thinking that the Lord's table may be despised. When you offer blind animals and sacrifice, is that not wrong? And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not wrong? Try presenting that to your governor. Will he be pleased with you or show you favor, says the Lord of hosts? And now implore the favor of God that he may be gracious to us. The fault is yours. Will he show favor to any of you, says the Lord of hosts? Oh, that someone among you would shut the temple doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hands. For from the rising of the sun to the setting, my name is great among the nations, and in every place incense is offered to my name, and a pure offering for my name, in, for my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it when you say that the Lord's table is polluted, and the food for it may be despised. What a weariness this is, you say, and you sniff at me, says the Lord of hosts. You bring what has been taken by violence or is lame or sick, and this brings you, and this you bring as your offering. Shall I accept that from your hand, says the Lord? Cursed be the cheat who has made a male in the flock and vows to give it, and yet sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts. My name is revered among the nations. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. So what we've got here is uh, uh, charges that are being set out against Israel. And this is uh, the southern kingdom in Judah, Jerusalem. Um, what God is basically saying is, look, you're not giving me your all. You're not treating uh, the things that I provide to you as blessings and take the best 10%, that tithe, and offer it back to me. And it's not because God wants the best, but he does see that as when we do that, that we believe in him, right? And that we live to him. So what apparently was going on, and this is an oracle against the priests, the leaders, saying, you know, you're, you're taking less than the best. You're taking things that are worthless, that if you miss, um, it doesn't mean anything. You know, if you give it up, I want the best out of you. I want your best. And that means it's not only what we give back to God, but it's what we do for God each and every day. So this is this is what's um, uh, he's really, although it has to do with the offerings that are being provided in the temple, it's really a call out saying, you you just you're not keeping me uh, first and foremost uh, in all that you do. All right, so we'll move on to our James reading in the New Testament. And uh, we're in the third chapter, so let's see what's uh, 
see what's coming up for us here today. This is um, verse 13 of chapter 3 through and into chapter 4, verse 12. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with the gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. From where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order that to spend what you get on your pleasures. Adulterers. Do you not know that friendship with the world is eternity is anemone, I'm sorry, anemone with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is for nothing that the scripture says, God yearns jealously for the spirit that he has been made to dwell in us? But he gives all the more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers and sisters. Whoever speaks evil against another or judges another speaks evil against the law and the judges. The law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. So who, then, are you to judge your neighbor? So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Good, good advice here from James. Um, he sets up this duality of uh, of our spiritual life, and uh, that is our spiritual life with God, which is a free choice, a free will decision that we make, and then the spiritual life that uh, exists on earth, that's very carnal and um, very, very much um, experiential, uh, very, very much. Um, tends to concentrate on physical things rather than spiritual and emotional. And uh, James is telling his people, his people, hey, you know, be honest with yourselves. You're, you're not doing these things um, because you're, you're seeking God. You're doing these things because you have these things that says that you're clinging to the world, right? Um, trying to keep up with the Joneses. And then when you don't have that, well, guess what? If you then you engage in disputes and conflicts, uh, claims that uh, things that are due you, or uh, claiming claiming victory over something um, that you didn't win. So those are all things that are anonymity with God. So that means that it stands against God. So good words for us. Good words for us today. Our gospel reading, uh, we're continuing on with Luke in the 17th chapter. This is 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. 
Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. All thanks be to God. This is, um, this is a, a good lesson. Uh, Jesus is making a couple claims here. Number one, uh, he's saying that um, this healing, right, this blessing, this grace that is delivered to this person who was not a Jewish person, so he's making the, uh, making the uh, remember, he's with his disciples at this point. They witnessed this. And this is probably happening in an area that's called the Decapolis. Decapolis. So it was an area that uh, Jewish people didn't go to willingly. Um, and it's also been pointed out that as if he was actually traveling from where he was to Jerusalem, that he actually went out of his way a little bit to go through this area. So they have lepers who were always considered to be unclean within the Jewish faith and the Samaritans also. So they were off on their own. Um, they have heard how Jesus heals and so when they come, he says, hey, go to your, go to the priest, right? And on their way, they're made clean. And one, only one, recognizes where the healing comes from. So he goes and he praises God. He praises Jesus, which is the second thing that's big about this, right? Is that Jesus is making a claim to be God. Now, this is what really got him into trouble with the, the temple authorities. Um, so he's doing this not only to release the leper, from his suffering, right, but also to make a statement uh, to his disciples about who he really is. And then, of course, he finishes it, as he does in a number of his healings, to say, hey, it was your faith. It was your faith that made you well. All right, I'll go back over here. I see Carrie is posting all this stuff. Barbara Shute, good morning. Ken Woods, good morning. Ann Winslow is with us. Good morning. Norma is with us. Joy Amber is with us. Another friend from Concord. Good morning, Joy. Mose Nolan. Mose and Marsha. Good morning to you. All right. I think I caught up with everybody. Everybody was willing to identify themselves. I can't tell who's on. I can only just see the comments. So if you comment, I know that you're on. But I know that there's 28 folks. So, um, so there's a number of people who I didn't identify by name. That's just simply because I don't know who's there. But I do appreciate and love all of you, and thank you for being with us. This is good, great for me to start my day this way. It really does, um, it really does grab me, and uh, puts me on the right track. I hope it does the same for you. Uh, you keep coming back, so there must be something good going on, right? And we'll keep doing this. We'll keep doing this. So, um, but before we go today, let's close this in prayer. Lord, we're not closing the, the, the Bible, but we'll, we thank you for giving us this time so that we could open it and hear your word. Think about it together and put it into a context that uh, we can apply it in our lives. So we thank you for this, not only the stories, but uh, the witness to your grace that was so evident in all of our readings today. We wake uh, this morning and uh, we're approaching Advent. So we just ask that you create in us a desire that uh, we hold the hope of the Messiah deeply within us. And that is uh, we approach this Advent season that's going to be different because of the pandemic. That you'll prepare in us a holy spa space so that uh, we can even while we can't be together, can celebrate what you've done for all of us. And of course, we pray for those who are sick. We pray that uh, they will be healed. Lord, we ask for your protection uh, as this pandemic rages around us. And then, Lord, uh, we pray for our country. And uh, we just pray that our leaders will be wise and make good decisions. And Lord, uh, we pray that, uh, that as we awake tomorrow, that we will also awake with the knowledge that you are alive, that you're present, that your Holy Spirit reigns. We ask all of this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. God bless you all. And uh, love you all. And um, hope to see some of you tonight at 7 on that Zoom call. 
And uh, if not, um, have a great day. And uh, we'll be back here tomorrow at 9 o'clock. All right.